Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm George the Antique Nomad at the Antique Nomad on Periscope, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we are here at Snohomish Star Center Antique Mall today. This is the oldest antique mall in the state of Washington. It's been here since 1982. It is also the largest antique mall in the state of Washington, five stories tall with over 200 dealers. And they sell all sorts of stuff here. And I'm a dealer here too now. So I want to go ahead and show you my spot today and then we'll come back and tour this huge place and probably floor by floor, there'll probably be several more videos from here over time. So let's take a look at what we've got for now and we'll go on from there. So this is the booth and I share it with a friend of mine who is a vintage fashion dealer. And so we have an interesting time combining our things together and it's a lot of fun. Uh, first, I want to show off this crazy owl lamp. I've never seen anything like this. This came from Kentucky. It's got all these fun owls on every branch. It's got mushrooms at the bottom. It is every circa 1970 motif you could possibly want, all in one, and a lot of fun. And so I had to bring that back. Uh, we have more elegant things in the showcase under it. We have some nice um, bookends, which are Bradley and Hubbard a very important brass maker from America back around 120 years ago. The little vase here is Royal Vienna with the beehive mark. That's a pretty collectible piece. We also have a nice uh, Weller piece on the right from about 1900 and some Royal Gouda on the left hand side. Um, in the next shelf here, these are really interesting pieces to me because I wrote the book on this company. This is pottery craft, which is a branch of treasure craft, and these anthropomorphic pieces were from the mid-1970s. They were done by a Japanese designer named Masa Fuji, who they uh, brought over, and the drip glaze overlap was uh, the creation of Robert Maxwell, the famous potter who briefly had an involvement with them. And then uh, going down to the bottom here, we have a couple of nice glass pieces, a Lalique shell plate, a Sev opalescent bowl, we're going to pull back here so you can see the whole display. Like I said, we mix vintage fashion in with other antique and vintage here. So we have a Ted Lapidus uh, sweater on the right hand side there with a cool uh, hat, which is from Morocco, dating to about 1970. On the left, of course, we see the old uh, Shriners hat, just for fun. Below here, uh, I'm going to show you a very big piece of glass. This is Pilchuck glass. This is the Pilchuck school, which Dale Chihuly is the progenitor of, and he taught various other glass blowers. The woman who blew that piece was a woman named Susan Glass. That was actually her name. And unfortunately, Susan Glass is not with us anymore, but because uh, we have the pieces to remember her by, and we're starting to see them come into the secondary market, we thought it'd be appropriate to bring them here. We also have a stack, speaking of clothing, of Norwegian sweaters, which have just come in. These are all 1970s vintage by Dale of Norway, Norway and they're pretty collectible. We also still have a little bit of the Metlock's Mobile and Freeform patterns, and I'm glad to see that we have a few in stock. We sold a ton of them in Florida and several here, but we still have a nice supply for someone else collecting that pattern. Up here we have some really big jewel, uh, I'm sorry, department store factices. Uh, and they are from the cosmetics counter, not necessarily the jewelry counter. But a lot of people enjoy having these at home because they're so dramatic, but you really can't get them if you don't sell in a department store, so when the department stores liquidate, we always look for these. Now on the uh, vintage fashion side here, let's keep moving through the booth. You're gonna see here a mink stole, and it is from about 1960, when they were so popular. There are people that still wear them, particularly people from Alaska and places where it's cold enough to justify needing such a thing. This coat is an interesting piece because it is a very good label. This is a Lily Ann of Paris and San Francisco. Lily Ann was a big designer name in the 50s and 60s, and the coats are very desirable and valuable. And another name that is popular these days is Coogie. This is Australian, and it's like the coat of many colors that Dolly Parton would sing about. And that is their style. You can see it's got the Made in Australia label. I believe this one is about 30 years old. 
they are pretty collectible now and surprisingly valuable. There's some more fun fashion in here too. I'll show this piece. This is a Miami Beach designer and you can see the party hats and sombreros and that one's just a lot of fun. So we're kind of transitioning between uh, summer and winter here so we're starting to see a changeover but we still have some nice summer dresses. This very pretty green piece with the floral applique around the bodice is a cute piece from the 50s. We also brought in a nice collection of Joseph figurines, including some of the harder to find French style, the larger ones there, Gabrielle on the left and Denise on the right. The one in the center is a music box. The French ones are based on the French Godi fashion books of the 1850s, of which we have one framed here. And so this is a print from the 1850s or 60s. The French Godi ladies books really ruled the fashion world during the last half of the Victorian era. And so we see a lot of interest in those and the fashions that were contained within. Backing out here, we've got a very pretty pair of mantle lusters and a nice art deco clock in marble. Marble seems to be coming back in style. All the home decorating shows certainly are saying that. And they are sitting on top of this piece, which is an old dentist or doctor's cabinet. The top lifts up. I have something similar at home that I use to keep my keys and the stuff that I don't want to forget when I'm going out the door. So I find it quite handy and hopefully someone will like this one as well. Going to slowly turn here past the English wardrobe and show you this side of the cases. Now here's another vintage piece. This one is Pendleton. And this is a 1960s Pendleton. It's got interesting buttons. This is actually a ladies shirt. It's got a little bit of padding in the shoulders and it would be contemporary to the time of this two old leather bag, which is late 60s as well. Coming around the other side of the front display, we see a lot of Native American and Iroquois beaded whimsies, basketry, Alaskan items. Uh, we have a nice little showcase of it here. The big pot there is McCoy pottery. You can see there's a woven bottle with the bead encrusting. That's an unusual piece to find. And then down at the bottom we have some stone pieces from the Columbia River Gorge including a big mall. Those stone points on the right. And then on the left we see seal skin Alaskan moccasins. So those are things that we find are of interest to people from a large area on the west coast and so we've got a nice display here of those. This shelf here mainly 1940s and 50s mostly American and these are kitchen items and kitchen things are very collectible because they are still functional and so a lot of people enjoy them they enjoy the nostalgia for old home cooked meals of the past because not a lot of people do that now so it creates more of a feeling of wanting to be in the kitchen and use it rather than just sitting on the TV and ordering in. And so people who like that sort of thing collect the spoon holders. There's laundry sprinklers in the back, uh, which some people use now to water their plants. The piece in the middle with the square holes is a toothbrush holder from the 1930s. And then we've got an egg cup and to the right the little pig is a razor bank. As is this guy down here by Clemenson's Pottery sitting in the middle. It's where you would put your old razors when you're done with them so they wouldn't cut anyone. Uh, we've got the kissing nodders. We called them nodders in the old days. They call them bobbleheads now, but if we take them apart for a moment where their magnet is holding them together, that's a magnet that attracts them to each other. So there they are bouncing around and bobbling and then it says on them, let's kiss. So let's kiss. There we go. The table lighter there is a Sasha Brostoff design. He's a big designer from the 50s, of course. And then we're going to come around into the rest of the booth. We have a lot of shelving here. You'll see a certain amount of uh, glass in China. There are still collectors for depression glass and just love the colors. All the pastels are very happy and bright. Uh, some of the green pieces will fluoresce under a black light. In this case here, we have an unusual piece here. This is a herend or herendi uh, from Hungary. And this piece with the fishnet painting, uh, the fishnet is what's unusual about it. A lot of people look for that now. We didn't have a lot of access to their wares during the time of the Soviet occupation. So unlike a lot of ceramics, they're actually in short supply here. 
a lot of costume jewelry in the space and some perfumes as well as ceramic art studio and Florence figurines and little half dolls. We had a lot of head bases out in the front, I think you may have noticed. We also tried to get odd ephemeral pieces in from time to time. Here's an example. This is the signatures of all of the Mills Brothers, and the Mills Brothers were a pretty popular uh, jazz harmony singing group back in the 1940s. And I got this from a gal who is a pianist at a cabaret in Seattle, and she had met them quite long ago in her youth and had those, so we're going to try to find a uh, collector who understands such things to buy them. This piece from the old North Coast Limited, anything railroad seems to do well, so we always look for that, and this is from our part of the country. The blue and white pieces here, a lot of them are blue Danube, as you can see by the box. There's also some blue onion in here. These are pieces mostly from the 1970s and 80s, and they are mostly out of production now, so we do carry them for people who are still matching patterns. Go by the uh, dragonfly here. This piece here is interesting because it is hard to find. These were at 7-Eleven in the late 70s, and this was advertising for kids to buy the plastic Slurpee character tumblers. They cracked, they broke, they faded in the dishwasher. I had a complete set as a kid, they didn't last. And as it says now, you can collect a whole set, and that is still true. Uh, if you want this whole set, because of the display card, which were mainly thrown away when the, dis when the display was over, that will cost you about $100 today. We also have in the showcase here some nice Wedgwood and Jasperware pieces. We have a large selection of baseball and football and sports cards. And we also have a nice shelf with Lucite purses. These are very popular as well. Uh, they are very collectible in Florida and there are collectors all around the country, including here in the Northwest. This is kind of a fun piece here because this is Wilt Chamberlain. And for those of you who might be too young to remember, he was very, very tall. I think about 6'7 or 6'9 or 6'11. He was one of the NBA's most prolific players. And he was prolific on and off the court. It has come to light that he has many children that we didn't know about. Uh, so anyhow, he is notorious in more than one way and very collectible. And so that was a fun thing to find. This is an interesting modernist print that was signed. It's by John Rogan, and this would have been a Chicago artist back in the 1950s. We still don't have a lot of good information on him, so if any of you know about John Rogan, we would love to hear from you. You can always uh, private message me at uh, Twitter. I'm at the Antique Nomad on all the social media, and I am always happy to get questions or comments and try to give you some feedback. This piece here is Treasure Craft, and it is in the book that I wrote on this company, which has been out for about 15 years under Schiffer Publishing's label. And it originally would have come with a cowboy. It's hard to find either piece now because they got knocked over and broken a lot, and they're usually in the $50 to $60 range. Up here we have the Washette and the Wolverine 1930s and 1940s children's washing machine and kitchenware there. This piece here is interesting. I'll stand close to it to, so you can see it a little better. This is a Japanese woodblock, a modernist style from about 1970. There's starting to be real interest in these. Just recently, the last few years, there's starting to be scholarship about who the artists were. This little piece down here is very pretty. This is a kidney-shaped desk, an American piece with hand painting. It looks like John Whittacombe. I'm not sure that that's the maker, but this is a piece from the 1940s, a really sweet piece that wouldn't take up a lot of room and just has a great shape and style. It's decorated all the way around, so it shows well from all angles. Another piece that I thought was cute was this cutwork shelf. This would have been something someone made in there uh, from a kit, most likely, or a um, pattern back in the 1940s or 50s. An incredible amount of work went into this, and it's only $35, so I'm hopeful that that will find a home with somebody who appreciates just how much detail there is, and maybe someone who uh, lives up in a ski chalet or something. 
Over here, we've got a bunch of figural decanters, again, 1960s vintage. And then we get into kitchenware here. We have the classic 1950s roosters. They look like Royal Copley, but they're actually Stuart McCulloch out of California, we believe. Pyrex and Fire King and all that 60s, 70s glassware for the kitchen is collectible. This is a nice little Pyrex butter dish from about 1970. This piece is a 1940s or 50s plastic fantastic red kitchen scale, but what's great is you could use it today. It shows measurements in pounds, ounces, and kilograms and grams and cups, so you have lots of options. So this could be used with modern recipes as well as old. And so I am going to turn things around here, or turn me around, I guess. And I just want to say again, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate having you here. Catch our daily posts on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And join us weekly for more videos as we explore the entire world of antiques and collectibles, one little piece at a time. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again.